Um, we have several different programs here. So we have um, for the primary, there is the master's level primary program, as well as the Bachelor of Education, Bachelor of Arts primary program. We also have a suite of secondary programs, which is um, at the uh, master's level, but also the Bachelor of Education, Bachelor of Science secondary, and the Bachelor of Education, Bachelor of Health Sciences. Now you also may be sitting in here thinking, well, hang on a minute, I'm doing a master's or a Bachelor of Education, Bachelor of Arts in early childhood, or you might be doing it in special education. So if you are doing something in your course that says Bachelor of Education, you're in the right place. And this is a very general introduction, or a master's, Master of Teaching, you're in the right place. This is a very general introduction to orientate you to Flinders University and welcome you here today. So without further ado, let's see if I can get this organised. At Flinders University, we take um, Indigenous culture very seriously and we would like to acknowledge the land that we meet on today is the traditional lands for the Ghana people and that we respect their spiritual relationship with their country. We also acknowledge the Ghana people as the traditional custodians of the Adelaide region and that their cultural and heritage beliefs are still as important to the living Ghana people today. So that is a very important way to frame your welcome here at Flinders. We take um, Indigenous culture very seriously here um, and we respect it um, as part of an integral part of that, your education degree. All right, we have the faces that you will possibly come across in this building related to your program. So the top left up there is Associate Professor Shane Peel. And if you're doing health and physical education, he will be your main contact person for any issues that you have um, that you may draw attention to through Ask Flinders. All of your inquiries go to Ask Flinders, but they also, if they pertain to the health and physical education program, they will end up um, being handled with Shane. Uh, Dr. Troy Peachnik is the secondary program coordinator, so face to a name if you're doing the secondary programs. Um, my face, Trudy Sweeney, is for the primary programs. I'm the port of call if you have, if you're doing a primary program and have um, any concerns or issues that can't be dealt with through Ask Flinders. Um, Rachel Hedger is not with us today, but she's the face for the early childhood programs. Dr. Carol Lalant has just walked in and she's the face for special and inclusive education programs. We also, thank you, Carol. We also have uh, Ms. Jackie Thompson. Would you like to? jump up. Jack, Jackie will say a few words about the professional experience program in a few slides coming up. And we also have Dr. Anne Spencer. Um, Dr. Anne Spencer will have a few words near the end of the PowerPoint slides about Lantai in particular, which will be something, a very important concept and uh, idea on your lips to get your head around what is that in your first year of the program. And we also have a, a Professor Dean Bateman up there. She is our Dean of Education. So she's not here today, but she is wandering around uh, the building. We I'd also like to introduce Elena Sanchez and her admin team. So we have Caroline and Sophie. Um, these are the faces behind a lot of your inquiries that may go through Ask Flinders. And Asaya, sorry, thank you, Carol. Um, there is quite a team of people working very hard behind the scenes to make sure that your enrolments, your registrations and any issues that you have with your uh, study plans are all sorted out. So there are a whole team of very competent um, and very knowledgeable people to help you with those concerns. 
All right, without further ado, let's get into the nitty gritty. Over to you, Jackie. I'll share with you this. Are you going to use that? Okay. Hello again, everyone, and welcome, and congratulations on choosing to pursue education as a degree. I'm sure... Can I ask you to come here so that you're in front of the... Sorry, I'll move. <laughs> um, as I said, um, it's a richly rewarding career, and education can take you in many places. It can also mean you can make a huge difference in the lives of young people and their communities. So across your degree, if you're doing an undergraduate degree, you will undertake three placements in schools and early learning centres. And if you're doing a master's degree, you'll under undertake two placements. So you'll meet myself and members of the professional experience team, first of all, next semester, uh, when you have a lecture series that prepares you for your very first placement for undergraduates, that's next year, and that's 15 days. So you can see there um, myself and Rachel, who's the Early Childhood Coordinator, Jennifer Francis, who if you're primary, you'll meet in your third and final year, and Anna Noble, who also supports special ed placements, as well as secondary third years. So you can also see lots of photos of various um, pre-service teachers who have been on their placements both internationally, there's one there in KL, we've had a program up until COVID that was, had a program in Malaysia. Uh, you can see students that have undertaken their placements all around South Australia, metropolitan and remote areas, interstate in Northern Territory in Queensland and on the APY lands in the north, northern part of South Australia. So placements can take you anywhere, and you'll find out a lot more as you go through, and you can start to plan ahead and think about, you know, how you can best use your interest and your skills to make sure that you set yourself up really well for success. Thanks, Sue. I'll see you in semester two. Thank you, Jackie. Okay, so... Next slide. The main messages that you're getting through the orientation session can be three main steps. So the first one I'm going to do, getting your essentials sorted. And then I'm gonna hand over to Troy and then we'll, he'll hand back to me. So step one, these are very clear and consistent generic messages just to set yourself up for success right from the get go. The first one, let's get sorted. Who's got their student ID card under control? Excellent, well done. If you haven't, your card gets you everywhere and will be something that you, well, not quite everywhere, but it will get you where you need to go. Um, so please make sure that you have that sorted as soon as possible. You can do that by going through your Opta, which is your, um, log on to Flinders and you can click on where it says order my ID card and make sure that you get that done as soon as possible. It's really important for you to have sorted so that you can borrow things from the library um, and um, not so much in the education um, uh, degrees. We don't really have too many exams for you but certainly something to get organised your card. Enrolling in your topics. If you haven't already enrolled for semester one, please do so. Um, it's really important that you get in there as soon as possible. You may see something called the wait list. And it is really important that if you are on a wait list, you'll be told that session is full and you'll need to choose something else. Um, Elena, did you want to jump up or Caroline and say any particular uh, messages about enrolment at this point? Or are you happy? Under control? Excellent. Um, the thing that's really important is please don't think that your work commitments, I know they are extremely important to you and you rely on that income, but that is not one of the special considerations to be able to get into a particular class of your choice. So the sooner you get in there, you can organise organize your workshops to get where you want to be but you at the right time to maybe release you to do some part-time work, 
but you need to be thinking about the wait list or the special considerations are really given to people who have timetable clashes or they have particular issues that um, maybe some medical issues or other concerns that really take priority. So please make sure that you sort your classes out as soon as possible so that you know where you need to be. You do not want to miss sessions. Each session is really important, particularly that first one. So if you haven't enrolled and you find yourself in a pickle, um, you're going to already start off behind. So please make sure you enrol as soon as you can. If you have any issues, go to the Enrolment Centre or uh, send a message to Ask Flinders. Textbooks. You are um, required to have some textbooks through your courses. Most of those are um, listed for you through the library and many are available for loan. So please make sure that you work out what are the textbooks that you need. You don't have to purchase all of them, but it is highly recommended that you do have copies of the textbook if it is identified for you for a course. Your topic coordinator has identified it because it's something really important for you to refer to. Please do not think that you can go through a course without accessing any of the readings because that would just be silly. How are you going to learn the content if you don't have access through the library or your own content of the textbook? Car parking. This one could really be painful if you get caught with a fine. It's uh, free this week, so please make sure that you work out how are you going to pay for car parking if you're bringing a vehicle on campus. So please make sure that you check out the uh, parking, uh, car parking arrangements on the Flinders website to look at your options because you do need to make sure that you don't get a nasty fine, and they are nasty fines, that you really don't need to um, at the start. So make sure that you understand also that you need to park in the parking bays. Don't do anything sneaky and think I'm going to park up here on the curb where this nice little under this tree is, because they will also fine you. You need to be in the right bay and you need your uh, correct um, permit. There's a range of buses, so there's loop buses to get around if you um, wish to get up between particularly uh, Tonsley if you need to get there at any time or down to Sturt. And there's more information on the Flinders website. There's scholarships for you as well. So you don't have to be a top performing student to get a scholarship, but if you're struggling financially and you're looking for some assistance, you might like to check out the scholarships because they might be of great help to you. Something that's really important, hopefully you've checked out EduRoam as the Wi-Fi. If you've got your own device, you should see it there, EduRoam. That's the Wi-Fi network for all your devices. To access it, you use your FAN, which is your Flinders authentication name, and which is your first three, actually it's first four letters of your, yeah, it's got three there, which is wrong. There's first four letters of your surname and then some numbers and then your, your unique university passcode that you put on for your um, Okta. Number two, step two. All right. Uh, so these are things you should be thinking about doing preferably this week. So um, while you've got time today, it might be a good idea to do some of these things. All right, so campus tours are obviously important. You need to find out where you're actually going. You don't want to be lost next week, not knowing where your classroom is, not knowing where, you know, law and commerce is or, you know, the engineering side over there or wherever it may be. So I do suggest that you do do a um, campus tour. They leave every hour between 10 and 3 um, and they're down at the plaza, so down at the end of the lake. So I certainly suggest that you do do one of these. Um, it will help as well. Maybe have a look at your timetable, try and find those classrooms this week um, and then obviously it will save you getting lost next week. Alright, um, the welcome hub. So. Um, 
this is basically down uh, at the end of the lake uh, where the sort of lawned area is. Uh, you'll see the big screen TV up there. Um, so obviously there'll be a whole heap of activities, students, staff, all those people down there this week for you to meet and they'll also be um, advocating different services here at Flinders that you can engage with or take part in. So um, basically anywhere between 10am and 3pm this week, um, I suggest you go have a look at that as well. Um, Flinders uses a whole heap of different acronyms that you'll need to come accustomed to. Um, so I'll just go through them. So when we talk about a SAM, what we're referring to is the Statement of Assessment Methods. So when you actually go into your flow page, when you look online, you can actually access this document. So it's basically a contract between us and yourselves of what the expectations are for you to sort of complete that topic. So it will have the assessment, what it is, when the due dates are, when you can expect to get the work returned to you, what the percentages are. And there's also other things like successful criteria. So you might have to pass a certain assignment or something before you can continue on. So every topic will have a statement of assessment methods that you can look at. Uh, flow, when we talk about flow, we're referring to Flinders Learning Online. Um, so that's the online platform we basically use here for all of our teaching. Um, so some of you might be familiar with Moodle and those types of things in the past. So it's very similar to that. Um, so you'll be able to access uh, readings, the weekly content, uh, there might be some additional resources up there and that's the platform you use to submit your assignments as well. So everything's uh, basically submitted through Flow, click on the assignment tab and then submit it and you'll get your feedback through there as well. A uh, fan refers to your Flinders authentication name, uh, so you'll need that basically to log in um, into Okta, into Flow, into your email, those types of things. So it's basically the first four, as Trudy mentioned, first four letters of your surname and then it'll be followed by a four-digit code. So most of you will probably already have that by now. Uh, CEPSW refers to our college that you're all in, so it's the College of Education, Psychology and Social Work. Um, when we're talking about, uh, I guess, your study planner, we're referring to things such as core topics, so they're the ones that you actually have to do, you don't have a choice, you must do those core topics. And elective topics are obviously optional. So, uh, you know, you, you have a choice essentially maybe what your teaching area is. So that would be an optional topic. So it might be history or geography or visual arts, whatever it might be that you're actually studying. Um, topics are obviously the individual topics. So most of you who are full-time would be doing four topics, I would imagine, this semester. And then the course is obviously your degree that you're doing. So Bachelor of Education, Bachelor of Arts or Master of Teaching, whatever that may be. The topic coordinator is responsible for the topic. So they're basically your first point of contact. Um, obviously, you'll all have a tutor within your workshop, but then if there's issues, difficulties, uh, you've got an access plan, those types of things, you will elevate that to the topic coordinator. The course coordinator is then the next step up from that, so that's uh, Trudy, myself, Carol, who we uh, spoke about earlier. So your topic coordinator is responsible for the topic and they're the ones you should engage with first and foremost about the topic itself. Uh, Okta dashboard is uh, when you log in, you'll have a whole heap of different tabs there such as Word, your student systems, those types of things. Um, in student systems you can apply for your scholarships through there. So basically once you log into Okta, um, you'll see a dashboard and a whole heap of different tabs there. So it will have Flinders Learning online, it'll have your email, those types of things. Uh, Ask Flinders, uh, that one is uh, basically f your first point of call if you need any help or support. So there's a whole heap of questions and answers on the site from previous years from students. If you can't find 
the answer to your question there, you can then submit a request and then it's generally forwarded on to the correct people who will deal with it and respond to you. So if in doubt, use the Ask Flinders uh, portal or website, just simple Google search and then you can um, put your query through there. Our college office is located on the fourth level. Uh, I don't know the exact number, but maybe have a look after the lecture today. So on the fourth floor uh, above us, you'll see the college office. So if you need a drop in there, and that's also where the professional experience office is as well. So generally you'd go to the office first. Actually, professional experience moved. They've moved, there you go. Ah, oh, okay. So they have moved, but go same, to the... Co same floor. Same floor, there you go. So go to the college office first if in doubt, and um, that'll be fine. All right, so I guess finding your way at Flinders to help settle you in and get you prepared and feeling okay about everything, uh, through Flinders Learning Online, they've put together this module for you to complete. It's called Finding Your Way at Flinders. I suggest you have a look at it, give it a go, and it's probably a good step for you for this week to do and before you actually get into your topics next week. Uh, there is help available. Uh, there's a whole range of services that Flinders offers that you're um, eligible for. Um, I guess the first one is the Flinders University Student Association. They're probably the best one for you. Um, they have a wide range of resources. They can point you in the right direction for certain things. So uh, FUSA is their acronym. Uh, so they're there to help support you and guide you through the next four years or however, however long it may be. There's also other... Um, Facilities, I guess, Flinders offer as well, health and wellbeing and counselling, disability services, the gym. There's a whole range of them that you're available to access, doctors, clinic, GP, those sorts of things. So there's a whole heap of them and you can find it through that link there. And the final thing for me is about uh, safety online. So uh, Flinders takes seriously cyber abuse. So it's generally behaviour that uses technology to threaten, intimidate, harass, humiliate someone with the intent to hurt them socially, physiologically and physically. So um, it can take place obviously online, in classrooms, through email, through chat, through collaborate, those types of things. So I guess my message is um, avoid it, don't do it. And there's a whole range of support services there if you're affected by it. Excellent. I think we're doing fairly well for those who are online who have joined us late. Um, I'm Trudy Sweeney and we are juggling two sessions here. I'll show you the people in the room um, at the end. So moving right on to making the most of your time here, it is really important that you plan your orientation. Set yourself up for success. That is the main message of today. So take time to actually sort out where you're going to park, make sure you know where your rooms are, make sure you have a bit of an um, orientation around the physical environment um, and there's a whole lot of resources there um, on the link if you do a search for orientation. So this week is O week and then there's three other weeks after that where there's lots of activities for you to meet each other and sort yourself out for success for the year. So please make sure that you know orientation is not just refined to today's session, there are other activities for you in the coming weeks. One of the, um, well, some of the social events for this week are the Bingo Bash, the Comedy Arvo, the Quiz Night, the Flinders Community Market, the Forest Walks and the O-Week Fair Days. So these are just some of the events that you might like to um, choose to go to and that's where you're going to meet other people around the campus and start to feel camp um, comfortable in your new environment. So there's a whole range of orientation videos available to you. Um, if you've missed one of these sessions and you want to go back and work out, hang on a minute, I really want to find out a little bit more about the uh, special ed program that will be coming up on Wednesday in their orientation. Maybe you can't go to that or the early childhood 
program. There's an orientation on Wednesday as well. If you cannot attend, you can go to the Flow website and have a look at the recording for that. So just some key messages that we've outlined there. Really the main thing that you need to be uh, understanding and there's video help is make sure you get your head around flow. <coughs> Pardon me. You cannot successfully navigate through your course and your topics if you don't engage with the learning management system. It's the one-stop shop. You will be expected to access your readings through there. All of the announcements and discussion forums are there. There's a lot of assessment tasks, um, information that's there that you are required to submit um, and uh, receive your feedback through that flow portal. So make sure that you're familiar with that. Um, make sure that you understand that there's a whole lot of other videos available to you as well in case you want to find out more. Mentoring programs are really important and successful um, at supporting students to navigate their way through university life. Not everyone feels comfortable when they come here and it's nice to actually have a mentor to help guide you to um, be successful and ask the dumb questions and get some support um, when you really are seeking some extra um, guidance. So there are a range of different mentor programs there. So you might like to check those out. It's a good way if you feel that you don't know anybody here and you might like to connect with the mentor program to start your, building your support network as you go through your course. Now the word study plan is something that you should be familiar with that's the roadmap, if you like, showing the topics that you need to do in sequence, more or less, of these are your first year topics, second year topics, and they're divided into first semester and second semester. So you will have a course rule that is a written document that tells you how to navigate through that course of topics. So please make sure that you are well aware that your course has been accredited, which means that we have um, been given approval from the National um, Australian Institute of School uh, Leadership to at Institute and School Leadership to uh, make sure that you are able to graduate, graduate from your program as, and get employment as a teacher. So that means that your program is very strict in what you do. This is not a choose your own adventure degree. So you have very carefully um, require, requirements through your course. Sometimes you'll get electives or options but they are few and far between. So if you're not sure what it is that you should be enrolling in, please refer to your course rule and your study plan. No choose your own adventures. All right, literacy and numeracy. This is Dr. Anne Spencer, and I'm gonna ask her to come up here and stand in front of this laptop and okay. also talk to the people sure. online. Thank you. Hello everyone, lovely to see you. I'm going to speak a little bit about LAMS height today and LAMS height stands for the Literacy and Numeracy Test for Initial Teacher Education. So it's a very long phrase. Basically, it's an Australian government requirement that everyone who wants to teach in Australia in order to graduate, register as a teacher and then teach must pass. They introduced this about five years ago or so, and maybe if you've been at school recently and um, been part of NAPLAN, it's a bit in that it's an Australian government requirement. It's not a requirement of any one university, it's the government who's decided it, just the same as NAPLAN, it's not a school decision. In order to pass it, and you may have lots of questions about this, and my details are up there, so please contact me at any time you have questions. This test, firstly, you might say, well, when should I sit it? At Flinders, so that you don't wait to the end of your degree and then think, oh, I've still got land type to do and I can't graduate until I've passed it um, and now I have to hold off on graduating. We require that you pass it before your third year placement if you're an undergraduate and before your placement in second year if you're a postgraduate student doing a course in two years. That said, we really emphasise that you don't 
wait to the last minute. So there are probably two key messages I'm going to speak with you today. Plan when you're going to sit land tight and prepare well so you pass the first time. You can have multiple attempts to sit land tight, but they're not endless. There are three and then the university needs to request if you are to do any more. So not to scare you, but to give you two key messages. One, plan when you're going to sit it. Don't leave it till the last minute, and I know you won't, you're here and you're organised. I would suggest that if you are doing a four-year program, that you perhaps look at it towards the end of this first year and aim to sit it in your second year, so that if you need more than one attempt, you've got time up your sleeve. If you are a master's student, a two-year program, I suggest that you look at it towards the end of your first year, towards sitting it. If any of this is confusing or you're not sure, my email is there for you to contact me and I will get back to you straight away about it. So plan when you're going to sit land tight. There are four opportunities every year to do that. The second thing is prepare well. Sometimes I compare it to getting your driver's licence. It's a skill-based test. Most of the time you spend driving in forward, but you still have to know how to reverse turn, do three corner turns, reverse park. You need to practise those. So just like that, practise and prepare for land height so that you can pass the first time. In order to prepare, we provide a lot of support here at Flinders for you. Flinders Uni has invested in online software and you can see that there in the middle where it says build literacy and numeracy skills anytime. So you can access that software, you will have a password and a code and I will um, make sure you have that, so contact me for that. And that means you can access that software anywhere, anytime, on any device to be practising and preparing. Secondly, just above that, there are online workshops twice a week. So again, you can join from anywhere and they are, they are recorded so you can listen to them at any time. When we go through what is Land Tide about and how do I prepare for it and pass it. So those are the main two things. If you want more information, please email me or go to the Australian Council for Educational Research website, which the acronym, another acronym is ACER and you will find more information, which is the official information about it, because they are the organisation that manages land tight on behalf of the Australian government. I know that's a lot of information in one short space, so please don't worry about it. Just be ready to engage with it and practise and plan. So plan when you're going to sit it and then prepare well for it with the support from Flinders University and contact me about any of that support. I hope that is clear and I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so thank you, Anne. Um, basically, we're coming to the end of this session and just helping you to start thinking about, as you navigate through your course, at connecting back to what Jackie had said about professional experience, and you do have some electives and options in your course to be thinking about you know, extending yourself and your employability. You really want to make sure that you're setting yourself up to um, be noticed by employers and you want to be best positioned so that it is a very competitive marketplace and that you're going to get noticed because of your competence. So start thinking about your choices available to you um, and be thoughtful about your elective selections so that it isn't always just about what might be fun or most enjoyable, but it might actually be something about being strategic so that you might actually pursue something of interest but get noticed by future potential employers. Um, there's a whole lot of things that you can do to extend your orientation. I've got a different PowerPoint here. <laughs> um, you can continue to visit fl uh, your way through the online um, Flinders Flow site. Um, you can link with the O-Guides that are 
wandering around the campus uh, this week and you also have three other weeks of orientation activities. So please don't feel as though you need to take everything in today. Um, that now concludes our session. I'm trying to run this online as well. <clears throat> and I would like to just finish by encouraging you to ask lots of questions. See if you can say hello and introduce yourself to at least three people before lunchtime so you have a little bit of time. Even if it's just a hello, how are you today, I'm, what course are you doing, I am. Just so that you actually start practising introducing yourself to a whole lot of colleagues that no doubt you're going to come across in some topics because some of you will be in a common topic um, in the first year. Um, I'd just like to finish by saying thank you to the staff um, and to you for coming. And I am an equal opportunities contact person. So Flinders University does provide equal opportunity um, contact offices in every college. So if you have any issues to do with sexuality, bullying, harassment, discrimination, um, anything that might relate to unfair uh, procedures or practices at the university, don't put up with it. Speak out, reach out, and I can be someone to help and look at the Flinders website for equal opportunity if you want help. Thank you and good luck, have fun. Phew. All right, I'm just gonna finish my online session. Do you happen to know when the uh, special education one on Wednesday starts? Uh, yes, I do. Just... I don't see anything on...